Hey Sainers, welcome back to the Saints TV YouTube channel. Welcome to the round nine preview. We're taking on the Cats, my favorite team, as you guys know. So um, if, you've, uh, if you've watched the channel long enough since its inception, uh, you would know that I am desperate for a win against Geelong more than any other club. And in the time that I've done Saints TV, we have not beaten Geelong. We haven't beaten Geelong, I think, since the Gresham goal in 2016, 2015. So it's been a while. This is an absolute crunch game, pretty much for both teams, but I think more so for us based on our last couple of weeks. We are seventh on the ladder. They are fifth. We're five and three. They're five and three. Our percentage is 117.3. Theirs is 126.3. They've played North Melbourne. I think when we talk about the key players that I think we need to take out of this game in order for us to win, you'll understand that it's, you know, the, the main guy is in the back half. And we talked about him pretty heavily in the podcast, and we'll talk about him a bit later in the video. But this is a huge game. Saturday, Marvel Stadium, 4.35 p.m. We haven't played at Marvel for a while. It's been like three or four weeks now. Um, hopefully we get a big crowd and... I think Saints fans just are desperate to beat Geelong, you know. Going to every year, I always think that an indication of whether we progress forward as a club or not is the teams that we beat that we haven't beaten in a while. So Geelong are one of those teams. We haven't beaten them in a while. They love beating up on us. We just have this inferiority complex based on 09 and them beating us in the granny and all that shit. So I think we need to cleanse ourselves. We need to get the monkey off the damn back and we need to beat him on the weekend. And I think we're capable. You know, Port Adelaide in shitty conditions, that game was just a dead rubber basically. And then Melbourne and Melbourne, they're elite. But I think we'll take a lot from that game and hopefully we'll be able to implement it a lot into this game. But in order for us to win this game, Saners, I've got three players. I've written down the names here. I'll show you. And uh, I think it's pretty expected um, as to who they are. You've got Hawkins, Cameron, Stewart. Now, I think personally, Tom Stewart is the key to this game. Because if you look at the last three or four times we've played Geelong, he's had 20 touches, he's had 10 marks. He's basically been the one player that has stopped us from scoring goals. And to be fair, last year... We worked around that. He had a big game, but King had one, he kicked one goal five. We should have won. And in the second game, Stewart wasn't playing. King was berserk in the first quarter, then injured himself and basically played at full forward and couldn't move for the rest of the game. And we lost after being 31-0 to zero up in Geelong. So we should have beaten them twice last year. And that's why I'm taking confidence into this game because we've got no excuses this week. We might get Jack Billings back. Hunter Clark probably one week away. We've got Zach Jones back, and he's uh, he'll be better for it after playing against Melbourne. We've got Paddy Ryder and Rowan Marshall. Our forward line is as strong as it could have been. Dan Butler likely to miss, um, and our back line is pretty solid as well. And I think you know Tom Highmore and and um, and line it, lean it, line it, lean it. I can't even remember what he, how he pronounced his name. Um, he could have come back in as well. So we've got. Only, we're only going strength to strength at this point. We're not losing players. We're getting players back, which is a great sign. But to my list, Hawkins. Hawkins. He's just one of the best in the league. He's He uses his body better than anyone, but he gets a lot of the ball, and he's the king of goal assists. He loves to set up his teammates. So when he's getting the ball around 50-60 out, he's beautiful on his left foot. He's beautiful on his right foot. We need Dougal Howard to give him a very, very tough day. And I thought last year when they played on each other... Dougal Howard did uh, probably get the points both times. I think I don't think Hawkins really had a field day either time, and um, and Dougs held himself really well. So we need a repeat of that, Dougs. Cameron, I think Wilkie's probably going to go to Cameron. I don't think Josh Battle can because he's not mobile enough. And again, similar to last year, Cameron I think kicked two or three in the second game that we lost. And in the first game, I think he kicked one or two, and they were pretty early in the game. Wilkie held his own pretty well, and it was more the smalls that actually got us against Geelong, um, which is another key point that I didn't mention on my list. But someone like a, uh, a Stengel or a Close, Parfit even, they're very dangerous players around goal, and they can all go in through the midfield and get their own ball as well. So we're going to keep a close eye on that because our small defenders, Pado and Webster in particular, haven't been in the best form. So we need them all to play a really, really important role for us on Saturday if we want to get the win. And lastly, and most importantly, Tom Stewart. What do we do with him, Sainers? Who do we put on him? 
Obviously, Max King is probably going to get someone like a Blixarves, maybe, or a De Koning. I think that's what the Geelong fans are saying because he's been in actually really good form lately. He's about 200 centimeters, 202. So he's um, he's got the height for King, uh, but it's more about the mobility and leap and strength. And I think that's where King can, can get him, but it's really up to us to get him one out because if we don't, the man that I'm just talking about, Tom Stewart, is going to be intercepting everything all day. So we need... Someone to drag him up the ground. We need something to happen because the last two weeks, we let Alira Lear dictate play out of the back half against Port and we let May and Lever do exactly the same thing the week later and they're the best in the comp at it and we lost the game. So if Geelong win this game, I guarantee you, I don't even need to look at the score. I'll look at the performance of Tom Stewart and he'll have 25 disposals and 14 marks or something and he'll have repelled multiple decent attacks on our end. That's the sort of game that I think this is going to be. We really need someone like a Tim Membry, maybe a resting ruck like a Marshall or Paddy or bring in someone like a Shaman that can keep him accountable because Shaman will lead all day. Tom Stewart will hate a player like that because he needs to go with him. Tom Stewart playing on Membry or a King they're just going for packs. And that's where Tom Stewart's going to be, or he wants to be anyway, because that's where he can spoil, or he can take an intercept mark. But if you're leading, and Tom Stewart wants to go and intercept with where Max King is, but you're leading and creating space on the other side, he's going to be like, do I let him get the goals? Do I let him get the marks in decent positions? Or do I go and stop King? You know, And that creates a headache for him. We need to create headaches for him. Because I think the game will be won. And everyone says in the midfield, but I honestly think it's going to be won at either end this week. You've got Cameron Hawkins at one end, you've got King and Membry and our resting rucks, um, and then Tom Stewart. So it's really a balance of what we do at either end of the ground that I think will decide whether we win this game or not. I think the midfield battle, I'm actually pretty comfortable with that. Usually, you know, you're going into a game against Geelong, you're a bit uncomfortable about that, but um, they're likely to regain Selwood, I believe, in the midfield. But, you know, he's been going, he's doing well for his age, but he's no star like he used to be. And then you've got someone like Stanley who's coming in and will pinch hit in the ruck, maybe with Blixarves as well going the ruck. So we've come off playing Jackson and Gorn in the ruck. We're now moving to Stanley and Blixarves. So Roe and Paddy, we need you to dominate this week, boys. This is the week to stamp your claim as the second best ruck duo in the comp behind Jackson and Gorn and get on the scoreboard as well because we did that last week. They both kicked goals. And we need them to do that again this week. Particularly if Stewart's having a good day, we need to find other avenues avenues to goal. And that's you know going to be beneficial if we have someone like Sharman come in. Jack Billings can come in and kick goals. Higo needs to hit the scoreboard more and kick straight. Um, and whether Ben Long goes into the forward 50 this week because we'll be missing Dan Butler. Um, potentially, I think it's a test, but likely that he'll miss. Um, Maybe he can be that defensive forward. They could even go to someone like a Tom Stewart and just annoy him. He doesn't need to match him in the air. Just just annoy him, tackle the shit out of him, and create chaos footy in the forward half for us and in the back half for Geelong. So this is a massive game. We win this. We go 6-3. and three. We probably... I don't know ladder-wise how it looks. Let me just double-check. Uh, we probably won't go... Oh, we would go into the top four uh, temporarily, uh, depending on other results. But... Um, that leads us to Adelaide and North in the next two weeks. So if we can beat Geelong, we've got Adelaide in Adelaide, which is you know a tough game because it's interstate, but it's Adelaide. It's one that we'd be favourites for. And then North Melbourne, obviously, you know they're struggling massively and got their own problems. So that takes us to eight and three if we win the next three Saners. Uh, but the key is this week. If we get through Geelong this week, I think that that takes that opens a door for us because we haven't beaten them in so long. And uh, they've always been top four, always been a benchmark team, just a well-oiled team. And um, I think it's, it's just an important stepping stone for us. Even if we don't go on to to make finals or make top four, I think just beating a team like Geelong will really just take some energy mentally off us and off supporters as well because we all want us to beat Geelong, you know, especially me. I'm, yeah, They're my most hated team. So um, I think the key is really the forward and the back half. I don't think the midfield's going to be too much of a trouble. I think if our rucks can get on top of their rucks, which they should, then our midfielders of Jonesy, Crouchy, Gresh, Steely, um, Sinclair, if he plays through there a bit more, um, they'll get first use more times than not. And then 6-6-6, we've got one-on-ones everywhere. That's the best time to isolate Tom Stewart because if we're doing what we did against Melbourne and we just play slow out of the back half, he sets up behind the ball better than anyone. 
we kick it long, he's just going to intercept Mark because no one's going to be on him. But if we're getting clearances directly out of the center, it's 1v1 in the forward half for us. That means that he has no time to set up and intercept. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. So we can isolate King and get, get Stewart in another part of the 50, and he's going to have no impact on that contest. If we play slow like we did in the first half against Melbourne, Stewart will intercept everything, and uh, I dare say Geelong are probably winning the game. So midfield, I think... Break even and that's good enough, but it's really what we do at either end that's going to decide the game. So, um, yeah, I'll leave it there. Hopefully you enjoyed the preview. I'm pumped for this game. I was pumped for last week, but this game, this this feels like a bigger game for us. You know, like last week we weren't expected to win. We were expected to challenge. Uh, but this week I really do expect us to, to bring a seriously good performance. We've played the benchmark. We should be really angry still at the Port Adelaide loss, but we should take a lot out of the Melbourne game, and hopefully that'll give us some sort of belief that we can beat Geelong, because we can. We are probably the better team out of the two this year, uh, but Geelong are Geelong. They always kind of fall over one week, and then they just bring it the next, and that's what they did last week against the Giants. I tipped the Giants, but the Geelong Cats got the job done, and and uh, you know they're fifth on the ladder at the moment. So this is a huge game for us, because if we lose... We could find ourselves out of the eight at the end of the round. But if we win, we could find ourselves fourth or fifth. So it's a huge game for both clubs. I'll be there. Hopefully, I'll see you there, Sainers. Hopefully, enjoy this video as well. Um, Saints TV Weekly is out. The podcast video is out. The full podcast every week now on YouTube if you want to watch it. Um, very funny segments. And we do preview the Geelong game as well. So if you want to hear Joyce and Marshy's thoughts as well as mine, head on over to that and have a watch. And I'll be back after the game Saturday night. Uh, live for a review of the Geelong game. So hopefully I'll be very happy and I'll be in good spirits and we can dissect a good win. But until then, Sainas, enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you after the game on Saturday. Take care and go, you mighty Sainas.